This lesson deals with linear dependent sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 4 starting on page 1. Chapter 4 deals with what are called active circuits. Let me start with some definitions. An active device is a component that requires an external power supply to operate. An active circuit is one that contains one or more active devices. There are certain active devices that are operating in what's called a linear mode, and we can actually model those with resistances and dependent sources. An example would be a transistor. A dependent source is a voltage or current source whose output is controlled by a voltage or a current somewhere else in the circuit. So our previous voltage sources and current sources, we call them independents, in that their value was predetermined or fixed. Now we're going to have a voltage source or a current source whose value changes depending on another voltage or current in the circuit. There are four possibilities. Let's take a look at dependent voltage sources. What's shown here is a voltage controlled voltage source. So the voltage here called V2 is related to the voltage V1 by a scalar. So we take the ratio of V2 to V1, that would be what we'll call mu. So the units on this would be dimensionless, or sometimes we list it as volts per volt. We're using a circle for our independent voltage source. What we'll do for the dependent voltage source is to use a diamond shape. Our default definitions are, again, assuming that things absorb power, so we're going to find the current coming into the plus terminal here. The second possibility is a current-controlled voltage source. So I've got the voltage source symbol again, and the voltage V2 is equal to R times I1. The ratio of V2 to I1 has units of resistance, and so the scale factor R has units of ohms. There are also two possibilities for current sources, one that's voltage-controlled and one that's current-controlled. Here's an example of a current source that's controlled by a voltage. Again, we'll define the current here, I2. That's going to be equal to G times V1. So the ratio of I2 to V1 is equal to G. So it has units of 1 over ohms. And again, what's happening here is the voltage somewhere in a circuit is changing the current somewhere else in the circuit. And lastly, we could have a current-controlled current source. So here my current I2 is equal to beta times I1. I could solve for I2 divided by I1. That would be the value of beta. And again, that would be dimensionless. Or you could say it has units of amps per amp. We're again going to sense current in a short circuit to be our controlling variable. The SPICE program has controlled sources built into it. Let's take a look at their definitions. Our first one here is a voltage controlled voltage source. We're just going to abbreviate that VCVS. Here's my voltage. It's controlled by a voltage somewhere else in the circuit. Suppose that these are four distinct nodes, and I'll just number them 6, 8, 11, and 0. Now in SPICE, the voltage control voltage source begins with the letter E, and you have up to seven characters or letters after that, but each component in SPICE has to be uniquely named. This is partly because if there's something wrong with your input file, a program will give you a, a diagnostic output in terms of the parts that aren't satisfying its basic definitions. The first two terminals here are actually the plus and minus terminals of the controlled voltage source, and then the next two terminals are the plus and minus of the controlling variable, then the last number here is the scale factor, our gain constant. For a voltage-controlled current source, this begins with the letter G in SPICE. You can have up to seven letters or characters after this. The first two are the plus and minus of our current source. The default notation in SPICE is absorbing power. So if the current is pointing in this direction, then the plus sign is here and the minus sign is here. So this would be absorbing power. Now, it may turn out this is generating power, but the default definitions in SPICE are everything absorbs power. Of course, we can have positive and negative results. So 5 and 7. The controlling variable is between 9 and actually 7. These don't have to be four distinct terminals. They can be interconnected. Those are the next two terminals. And then the scale factor. This is 8 milli mos would be the units on it. Now, in the original SPICE program, they didn't have lowercase letters, so they had to make a decision as to what to do with the letter M. They decided that the uppercase M would mean milli 10 to the minus 3. Now the PSPICE program will take upper and lowercase letters, but they all mean the same thing. They mean 10 to the minus 3. Now if you want something like 10 to the 6th, what they did in the original program was use the letters MEG. And you can do uppercase or lowercase now in PSPICE. This is a very common mistake that people make in doing SPICE files. Because in the course we're going to use little m for milli and capital M for mega. But in SPICE it's the same thing, 10 to the minus 3. And if you want mega, ohms, or whatever, for 10 to the 6, you need MEG. Current controlled voltage source in SPICE begins with the letter H. We have a plus and minus terminal. This will be our first two. 
but now we need to sense the current in a wire. The way this is done in SPICE is to use a voltage source with a value of zero. So it just becomes a short circuit. So there is a plus and a minus sign associated with every voltage source. That's your first node and your second node. But you have to define a separate device for that. So in this line here, we've got plus and minus of our controlled source, the voltage source that sends the controlling current, and then the gain factor. And that was equal to 10 in this case. The voltage source is between seven and six. It has a value of zero. If you leave nothing here, the default value is zero. And then lastly, you can have a current controlled current source. This begins with the letter F in SPICE. Again, I have a plus and minus terminal because every component has a definition for absorbing power, and this would be from B to D, B and then D. And again, you don't have to use numbers here. You can use letters, you can use names, whatever might make sense. And again, we need something to detect or sense the current. I just call that vSense here. So I have to give the name of that voltage source, and then I have to define that voltage source somewhere else in the input file. Usually put it on the next line. And then the scale factor in this case was 100. Our sensing terminals are plus and minus, first node and second node here. These are some of the properties of linear dependent sources and some of the ways you can represent them in SPICE.